Part three. It's been a few days between um, between those first two, which I filmed in quick succession, you know, one after another, and this one, and um, yeah, it's probably been like five or six days. And this morning I went to the gym, and maybe it went a bit too hard. Well, not too hard. That sounds like a fucking. I exercise quite uh, intensely, and I feel absolutely fucking wiped out. But anyway. I think I've shown this one before, Pure Movies. It's a four CD thing. I show, yeah, I have shown these. I showed all the ones I have of the Pure series. And this has a uh, pretty decent cross-section of uh, soundtrack, famous soundtrack songs from cinema. So just as a kind of random Ghostbusters, Viva Las Vegas, Man Eater, the Mission Impossible theme. Sorry, every time I do that, it refocuses, doesn't it? Uh, the Batman theme. I guess that's the na, 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 na. the John Williams one. I think was it John Williams who did that? Because that was used on Batman the animated series as well in the early nineties. Anyway, <clears throat> Walt Disney's Fantasia. It's a two CD, uh, two disc set, and I only have disc one. I don't know what's on disc two, but disc two wasn't in the shop, so I thought I'd just get disc one because Fantasia is something that's always been close to my heart. It's a um, it's a, a Disney thing that kind of one of the first, the earliest memory I have of seeing a Disney or Mickey Mouse. I shouldn't say Disney. I should say Mickey Mouse show, movie, whatever you want to call it, was Fantasia, and um, and even when I hear the music now, some of the, the classical things I use in this, like. The Nutcracker Suite, or the Rite of Spring, um, it reminds me of Disney, uh, of Mickey Mouse and Fantasia. The Rite of Spring by Stravinsky is, especially the very first part, which I'm, is very famous, uh, is one of my favorite classical pieces. And I rediscovered it when I was at university. I was doing this paper on Russian culture. It was during the summer school. So you could go back, you know, at summer school was like, don't have like a four month break between semesters. It's not like summer school as in high school where you've got to go. It's like an optional thing you could do to finish your degree faster. So I did it. And um, you have to go sit and during some, the summer holidays and do a paper very quickly. We're usually a semester is what? Four months, but they compact it into one month. So you're learning a whole bunch of shit really fast. And I well, one of the parts of that Russian culture paper was focused on Stravinsky's Rite of Spring, which, um, yeah, I just love. So I guess this, the second CD set would be the other music that's used in it. I think I've shown this before as well. This is a Ministry of Sound uh, soundtrack compilation. Now, this always kind of perplexed me a little bit, this is three disc collection, is that when I think of Ministry of Sound, I think of dance music. I think the Ministry of Sound originally was a nightclub in the UK. You know, there was like Gate Crashes, um, Ministry of Sound, there were some other ones as well. I, uh, and yeah, they were all about dance music and that shit. And for whatever reason, this is not dance music. This is like the other one I showed before, is a compilation of movie soundtrack thing so we've again just randomly we've got the main title from star wars from the back to you know the main title from back to the future um the love theme from spartacus lara's theme from dr Zhivago. Zhivago. uh the thing from independence day the darkest day i think that's when the president's given a uh, bull what is it bill pullman or bull yeah, Bill, Bill Pullman is giving a speech. Sorry, that's really annoying, I'm sure, every, how it does that. The um, the theme from Shawshank Redemption. So again, or the Adagio for Springs, Strings by um, it's by John Barber, I think, from uh, Platoon. So I don't know, maybe they, they kind of um, expanded or diversified their, their releases into just random 
compilations that were not tied directly to dance music but this has no, got nothing to do with dance music because i thought when i first saw this this would be like remixes or some, shit, some terrible shit like that but it's not it's just a pretty straightforward across the board famous movie soundtracks that like this other one i showed covers a lot of ground and has a lot of good stuff on there i've shown these two before two volumes of the disney greatest hits I got volume one and two. So we've got about 20 songs on each. Tarzan, Hercules, Hunchback of Notre Dame, Pocahontas. So this kind of goes down through the years. From 1940, the Pinocchio, When You Wish Upon a Star, Jiminy Cricket singing. Lady of the Tramp, Snow White. Well, Snow White was the earliest, wasn't it? But you get the point. From the 40s, the 50s, the 60s. Nothing from the 70s. Because Disney, did they really release much in the 70s? Wasn't that Robin Hood one from the 70s? You know, where Robin Hood's like a fox. Um, and then up into the kind of the... the um, in my mind, the kind of... Second golden age of the early 90s with like Little Mermaid, Beauty and the Beast, Aladdin, Lion King, that kind of era, up to Pocahontas. And then this is the same. This has got basically the same kind of movies, but just different songs. So instead of having um, Tarzan, Strangers Like Me, but Tarzan's You'll Be In My Heart, which is the um, Phil Collins song. Phil Collins did the whole soundtrack for Tarzan. I'm not sure if he's actually singing on that or if it's the instrumental. This one's also got nothing from the 70s. But let's see, this one has got from um, Lion King, The Circle of Life, whereas this one's got Hakuna Manatara. Hakuna Matata. So this is an official Disney release. It's all licensed, so it's not not the um, uh, you know off brand or, or re recordings or anything like that. So um, I don't actually really listen to it that much, but I thought I'd pick it up because those are some classic songs on there, whether you like Disney stuff or not. The soundtrack from the movie Arizona Dream. Never heard of it. Never seen any hide nor hear of this movie in my entire life, but it must be a movie. There's a picture of it. It says a film by Emir Kostruka, starring Johnny Depp and Jerry Lewis. Okay, so Faye Dunaway, these are all bits of gallo. You know, these are some big names there. But the fact remains, I've never heard of it. It's from 93. So the Johnny, you know, when Johnny Depp was most famous, he came of he came about, didn't he? During um, what what was the first movie here? Well, he was on Nightmare on Elm Street. He had a small part in that, and that was a, that was the early to late eighties. No, sorry, the mid to late eighties. Then he was in Twenty One Jump Street, the TV show. He was in Tim Burton's um, Edward Scissorhands, which was about ninety one. I'm sure I'm missing some other kind of big movie that he was in that kind of cemented his name as a as a a list. But anyway, I the reason why I kept this is because I listened to it and quite enjoyed it. I thought it was quite a, a quite a good soundtrack. So what do we see? We got some stuff by Iggy Pop. Um, two songs, oh, a few more than two songs, a few songs there by Iggy Pop, and then the uh, soundtrack itself, the score at least, is um, done by this guy Goran. Bregovic, Bregovic. Uh, I don't know who he is, but obviously he's a some sort of composer um, of some type. I'm reading this here. Johnny, uh, the latest film by this book, and the first to be filmed in America following the international success of When Father Was Away on Business, never heard of it, and The Time of Gypsies, never heard of it. Costa Rica, Costa Rica now creates a modern... American folktale in which Cadillacs and flying machines are transports of delight. So it mustn't have done much because I'm fairly with it with movies, at least uh, mainstream and a little bit off mainstream. I, I know most big things of that era, at least, and I've never heard of it. But then again, maybe I think I am, but I'm actually I'm not. Um, anyway, let's continue. Classic. At least classic soundtrack. The movie, I don't think, was that great, to be honest. But the original motion sound, picture soundtrack for singles. Cameron Crowe came out in, what, 91, I think? 
1992. I'm saying two dates here, 92 and 90. I think 92 would be more, make more sense. So we've got Wood by Alison Chains, <clears throat> Breathe, Seasons by Chris Cornell. Um, I think it was his first released solo song outside of Soundgarden. You know, over the years, he um, even in Soundgarden, he released it. Like uh, the other one was um, Sun Shower. He released that while he was in Soundgarden as a solo song. And then obviously after Soundgarden, he had a solo career. But uh, this was 91 was obviously the, this was before really Soundgarden even went big time because Bad Motorfinger came out the same year. But some would argue that with Bad Motorfinger, although it didn't perform, perform badly, it certainly didn't push them into like household name status. That came with Super Unknown, which was three years later. Uh, Love Mongers, Mother Love Bone, Birth Ritual by Soundgarden, State of Love and Trust by Pearl Jam. <clears throat> One of my favorite Pearl Jam songs. And I've said this before, as far as I know, and I could be wrong here, this is the first uh, place that this was available because it wasn't released on any album, Save Love and Trust. It may have been a B-side to a single from the 10 sessions, maybe. I know that later it was released on uh, Pearl Jam Greatest Hits, like that Rearview Mirror compilation and other things that they released, but certainly at this time, it wasn't, you know, this is, again, this is the same time 10 was released. It wasn't on 10. Maybe on, it may have been on a single from 10, though. But um, uh, Jimi Hendrix, Screaming Trees, and Smashing Pumpkins. So really a, um, a what's the word? There's a good word to use here. Like a, 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 an iconic uh, album of that era. You know, all my friends knew about the sound soundtrack for singles. Again, I don't think anyone gave a shit about the movies. I don't think anyone even talked about the movie. <coughs> I didn't actually see the movie till years later. <coughs> but everyone knew the soundtrack. Saving Private Ryan. John Williams soundtrack. Um, would you say it's one of his classics? You know, he has so many classics, John Williams. Um, I don't know enough about him to, to say what are his classes. Obviously, things like um, Star Wars and Indiana Jones and, you know, the the ones that everyone knows that are so recognizable. But I, I'm sure some would say that that's that maybe some of the lesser known ones are, even though Saber Pride of Rome is a massive movie. And I'm not saying it's a, a lesser known movie, but it's um, the soundtrack maybe not may not be as instantly recognizable as those other ones I just mentioned. Did he do Jurassic Park? I think John Williams did Jurassic Park as well, which is, again is a very recognizable one. Cold Mountain. Now, this is a great soundtrack. This was $34.95 when the person originally bought it. I got it for... Okay, you can see half the label there. It was $1. Um, I never, I've never seen this movie. This is the movie with uh, Jude Law, Nicole Kidman, and who's that? Is that Renee Zellweger? I think it is. It was one of those movies that it was talked about a lot, and I think it won a lot of awards, like Oscars and whatnot, but never had any interest in actually watching it. Um, and yes, Jack White stars on this quite a lot. Uh, and he was actually in the movie. From just a small part, like he's playing like a, a traveling minstrel or something like that. Um, so you see Jack White, Jack White, Alison Krauss, Jack White again, Alison Krauss again. Those are the only names that I know. Now there's one interesting kind of choir song, and I don't know now. It may actually no. I've got a feeling it might be track nine, the Sacred Harp Singers at Liberty Church. It's this vocal a cappella performance, but the way they do it, I've never heard anything like it before. It's like, um, I don't know how to describe it, like kind of do, using the different sections of the choir for different tones. Like if you've ever heard that Bulgarian women's choir, you know, the mysteries of Bulgaria, um, you might've heard they do this 
amazing vocal performance of gear as a female choir so it's much higher and it um they use I, I don't even know how to, I don't know enough about s describing sounds and tones to describe it properly but this performance on this is a lot more raw and um uh, loose it's not as tight as that female choir is but it's really interesting um that kind of music like i said i never heard anything like it before i might be wrong it might not be track nine but i've got a feeling it's track nine sacred harp singers at liberty church i'm going home anyway apart from that it's just it's it's a pretty good uh soundtrack it's kind of like blue grassy that era civil war era american music which is obviously influenced by uh, Celtic music and um, music from different parts of Europe where people had come and then the way it integrated into American culture over the years and I guess with African-American music that had come over from Africa all that kind of stuff together um, talked about things there I don't really know a lot about but nonetheless it's a good soundtrack Sliver remember this movie the one with Daniel Baldwin William Baldwin, sorry, wrong Baldwin brother. William Baldwin uh, put a bunch of cameras around some apartment building that he owned and Sharon Stone lived in one of them. Don't know what Tom Berenger was doing. I have seen this movie. I saw it on TV when I was a teenager. It was a TV movie they showed. And uh, I don't remember thinking it was that bad, but I think it was kind of slated when it came out. Um... Howard Shaw did the, the soundtrack for this. Uh, Howard Shaw, if you don't know... Um, okay, he didn't do this, this, this soundtrack, because I'm saying this is all different artists. The score, Howard Shaw. Howard Shaw did the Lord of the Rings trilogy score as well. But we're seeing here, we got UB40. I can't stand UB40. Now, that might be something because I'm, I'm a New Zealander, and UB40 are beloved in this country. Absolutely effing beloved for whatever reason i think the reason is, is that new zealanders have a over appreciation of reggae and i don't like reggae at the best of times you know there's the odd reggae song i like i guess there's some bob marley songs are okay and even some of the other ones i've heard but generally no i don't like it and ub40 is kind of like um almost like homogenized reggae without bringing race into it. It's kind of like white person reggae. Um, and it's just played on the radio incessantly, even more so when I was a kid. Red, red wine. Uh, what's this one? Can't. This is the Elvis Presley um, cover. Can't ha help falling in love. Enigma, Fluke, Massive Attack, Unfinished Sympathy. Classic song. The first 20 seconds of that song, are kind of the... Uh, the one of my favorite intros for any song ever. The part where it starts off, it's just boom, 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 boom. And then there's a, 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 like a, a, someone saying something in the background, like a vocal you can kind of just hear. And then it does this record scratch. And then that, the beat comes in and they use this like spoon sample. Bing, 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 bing. You know the song if you've heard it. That from that from the zero 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 of that when it starts up to when the ladies' vocals come in, hey, 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 I think it's Shara Nelson. Between that and that is one of my favorite intros of any pieces of music ever, which is a big call I know, but it's like <clears throat> perfect on every level for me for whatever reason. I've always loved that since the first time I heard it. Just the, the drum beat, that kind of the simple bass. Doom, doom, shit. Doom, doom, doom. And then the record scratch. And then that, the, that spoon, or is it like bells or spoon sample? Ding, 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 ding. I love it so much. Shaggy, O Carolina. That's a pretty terrible song. Um, Nina Cherry, Enigma. We've got two Enigma songs. Or three Enigma songs. Now, this this movie, it's actually interesting that Enigma he, he, features heavily on this, is that 
if you've seen this movie, it's kind of like you can see there with that kind of picture with Sharon Stone and Billy Baldwin in some amorous embrace. It. How can I describe it? You know, when I when I try and describe things, I've said this before in the video. I can't describe. I can't put my thoughts into words very well at all. And so the the uh, what I'm trying to put across here is. In the 1990s, there was this kind of uh, archetype of man. No, no, that's not going to sound right. This aura or atmosphere of like suaveness and coolness and um, sensual, sensualness or sensuality, whatever the adjective is for sensual, um, or the noun is, I should say. And that music, Enigma, if you remember Enigma, Enigma was this kind of uh, marrying of uh, semi-electronic with worldy, new agey music with a bit of Gregorian chants and Latin singing and European accents. All of that together with that kind of image fits perfectly with what they were trying to achieve there. Image-wise. The story is another thing. I can't I can't comment whether the story is, is good or not. But um, <clears throat> like I said, I remember it being okay. But this movie kind of has a has a, um, a reputation for being terrible. So, Verve. I wonder if that's the Verve. Surely not, or just Verve. Although he, maybe it is Star Sale. Anyway, because I think back then this was ninety three. Back then they were called the. They weren't called the Verve. They were called something else. They were called the Northern Verve or something. They had another name before. They were called the Verve. Um, okay, I'm getting... Oh, jeez. I've only... So many to go. I'll just go a, a few more and then I'll have to cut it and go to another video. 